At least 16 in major fire killed in major fire at arms report in Kulgao near Varda district of Maharashtra. Fire brought under control. And Maharashtra cabinet decides to set up employee state insurance corporation at state level by converting existing scheme as per ESI Act 1948 amendments. Thank you, Rukma. Welcome to Metro Scan from Mumbai. And now let's see the news in detail. A major fire at the central ammunition depot near Vardha in Maharashtra that broke out early morning has killed at least 16 personnel, including 13 defense security corps shawan, one soldier, and two officers, and has injured 19 others. The injured were evacuated to nearby military hospitals. Several villages around the depot have been evacuated. Water is being transported from tankers of nearby villages. Director General of Military Operations said the real cause of the incidents will be revealed only after a thorough probe. The central ammunition depot at Pulgao is India's biggest ammunition depot as stocks from various factories comes here first and is then distributed to various forward areas. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Narendra Modi condoled the death of army personnel in the fire at the depot. Immediately after the incidents, Maharashtra Chief Minister Devendra Fadanvis directed district officials to extend whatever help possible. Many state ministers have also visited the fire site and injured people in the hospital. Defence Minister Manohar Parikal also reached on the spot and reviewed the current situation. The state cabinet were decided to set up Employee State Insurance Corporation at state level by converting existing scheme as per Employee State Insurance Act 1948 amendments. The central government to bear 100% cost for this corporation for first three years and thereafter 90% cost shall be bared by central government. This will benefit lakhs of workers enrolled with Employee State Insurance and they will get better health facilities. Meanwhile, the cabinet also sanctioned 100 posts for super specialty hospitals in Nagpur with a cost of 7 crore rupees per year and 147 posts for trauma center with cost of 4.48 crore rupees per year. And Union Minister of State for Finance, Jain Sinha, said that India is looking to start a significant fund that will invest in distressed loan held by lenders as regulator strive to clean up non-performing loans in a struggling sector. He further added that there are several players interested in investing in such a fund, including the National Investment and Infrastructure Fund, Special Situation Funds, and smaller stress asset funds. Sina was speaking on the sideline of an event by credit rating agency Crisil in the financial capital. The minister also counted the achievements of government on the completion of its two years and said that it works on Sabka Sat Sabka Vikas. He further said that the government is a pro poor government and works on the lines of ending poverty through its various initiatives. And the four-month window for declaring domestic black money will open from tomorrow and those opting to come clean by paying 45% tax and penalty will not be subject to scrutiny and inquiry by tax department. The Income Declaration Scheme 2016 will remain in force till September 30th for filing of declaration and payments to a taxes, surcharge and penalty must be made latest by November 30th. Income Declaration Scheme 2016 is a wonderful instrument from the Government of India to fish out domestic black money from the economy. We have DS Saxena, Principal Chief Commissioner of Income Tax Mumbai to speak more on this issue. So thank you very much for joining DD News and talking on this issue. So first question, what is this uh, entire scheme and what would be the purpose of it? As you said, the purpose of the scheme is to take out black money from the economy which is acting as a cancer right now. The modalities are very simple. You only have to form a very, uh, you only have to fill up a very simple form, pay the tax accordingly, and then you will receive a certificate for, and that black money would turn white. Okay, so what would be the salient features of this scheme? The salient features are that uh, firstly, you ha the person who is declaring his earlier undisclosed income has to fill out form number one. This form can be filled either on the income tax site that is income tax india efiling.gov.in or he can file it uh, in physical form with his jurisdictional commissioner. This scheme is different from earlier schemes firstly because it very much simpler. In the earlier schemes, they talked about the value of some asset in some earlier assessment years and it had many unnecessary complications. Now, 
only the fair market value as on 1st June 2016 is to be taken. Secondly, in the earlier schemes, there was no penalty on undisclosed income. In this scheme, there is a penalty of 7.5% on the undisclosed income. Uh, what would be the entire taxable amount of this uh, a person whoever is disclosing the amount? Uh, he has to pay 45% as tax. The breakup is 30% tax, 7.5% Prish Kalyan says and 7.5% penalty. The last two years of the current government, how has the entire scenario changed and uh, you know bringing out this introduction uh, introducing this scheme uh, and uh, going forward what is the way ahead and uh, how much has the scenario changed uh, scenario has changed quite a bit now i think uh, we are more transparent more vigilant uh, intolerance towards corruption has also grown public is also very much aware now so the way ahead is that uh, the department sh should do its bit for the public good and the public also should come forward and cooperate with the department. All right, sir. Thank you very much for talking to us. Thank so, you. So uh, this was uh, uh, the principal chief commissioner speaking to us and giving a message out to people that public should come forward and dis uh, uh, disclose their undisclosed amount and also the entire aim is to uh, fish out the black money and bring in more transparency and we are hoping that uh, this uh, aim would be fulfilled. Senior Congress leader. Indian Finance Minister P. Chidambaram today filed his nomination papers at the Vidhan Bhavan for the biennial election to Raj Sabha from Maharashtra. Chidambaram was accompanied by former Chief Minister Prithira Chavan, Maharashtra Pradesh Congress Committee President Ashok Chavan, former Indian Home Minister Sushil Kumar Shinde, leader of position in State Assembly Radha Krishna Vikhe Patil and other party leaders. Today is the last day for filing the nominations for the biennial elections to Raj Sabha to be held on 11 June. And that's all we had from Mumbai. We'll be back tomorrow evening with some latest update. Till then, goodbye. This is back to Rukma.